Today I will be reviewing this book, Dear Resistant Design by Karen Chapman, published by Timber Press, copyright 2019. The author moved from suburban Kirkland, Washington to rural Duval, Washington, and realized that her extensive gardening library was woefully lacking information about designing gardens when you have deer as neighbors. So she set out on a mission to figure out how to do it so she could write her own book. I'm going to start by saying what this book is not. It is not a reference library or a scientific database of deer-resistant plants. It is also not a how-to book for designing a deer-proof yard. If you are looking for a simple reference book with a list of deer-resistant plants and corresponding photos, this is probably not the book for you. But most helpfully, she says that right at the beginning, then offers an excellent web resource to help you if you are looking for a database. It's called Rutgers NJAES Rating System, and it's linked in the description below. But if you are dealing with difficult neighbors and need some moral support by reading the stories, challenges, failures, and successes of other gardeners battling with deer, then this may be a good choice for you. And while you are looking for great gardening books to add to your collection, remember to subscribe for more recommendations from me. I have been reading a lot this year and have several more book reviews coming soon. What this book is, is a collection of stories and anecdotes of the trial and error of gardeners around the U.S. as they try to maintain a beautiful landscape while still coexisting with their hoofed neighbors. The pictures are gorgeous, and the descriptions are rich and vivid. There are lots of fresh ideas in here from which to glean inspiration. There are clever quips and jokes. I like her suspicion that deer can read price tags because they always eat the most expensive specimens. Each chapter is about a garden and its people, which are showcased from all over America. There are 13 in total. Each has its own unique challenges, soil type, water issues, other pesky critters, etc. These are highlighted in a little chart opposite a full page rendering of the landscape. The bulk of the chapter is the story of the garden as it transformed from a deer ravaged attempt of a garden into a beautiful oasis. Lastly, it has a list of the top favorite plants in each garden. The very last chapter is a showcase of stunning containers filled with deer-resistant plants. Each example has a complete list of all the plants they contain. All the plants referenced in this book are listed with a beautiful photo, a brief description and the details of its growing habit and requirements, hardiness zone, and deer resistance rating according to the Rutgers NJAES rating system. There is also an index in the back of all the plants by both common and scientific name, if you want to find something specific. My opinion. At first, I was a little annoyed at all the stories. The author's own garden is nearly 20 pages of story before it gets to the list of her favorite 10 plants. It reminded me of college and took me right back to my interior design classes and the many assignments where we spent hours reading and writing about interiors, describing details in fancy sounding design lingo and using sophisticated sentence structure. But the stories are about the challenges the gardeners faced and how those challenges were overcome. I can definitely see the value in that, especially for a discouraged homeowner. Reading about the thought that went into the design is helpful as well. It was like I was sitting in the person's garden looking out at its beauty and hearing about the story of its evolution. I appreciate that if a professional designer was involved, they are credited and noted on the first page of the chapter. Any reader that lives in those areas can look up and contact them. I also appreciate the index because more often than not, I just want a list of plants to consider. What's even better than just a list is turning to that page and having another list of plants to pair that one with, and they will look beautiful together. That's the key of how to use this book, by the way. Several times, elements were described in the paragraphs that I would love to see, but there are no pictures of those elements. Or the pictures were on another page, so I was left hoping I was imagining it correctly until I stumbled upon the picture and realized that that is what I was reading about a few pages ago. Sometimes the only image is the rendered plan at the beginning of the chapter. But that's my only criticism. Overall, once I figured out what this book actually was and really got into it, I loved it. 
I think it will be great for homeowners that need some moral support and for designers that need some inspired fresh ideas. I have a link to Timber Press's website down below if you'd like to buy your own copy. Thanks for watching, stay warm and safe this winter, and I will see you in the spring. Thank you.